How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. We haven't spoken to you on this show since Friday, and a lot has happened since, and a lot is happening well, from this point forward, as always, we got a lot to get into on the show here today. We got lots of ticket sale news. Today is a, a big day for, for WWE and AEW because the Battle of the UBS Arena begins tonight as Raw is at the UBS Arena, and Dynamite will be there in a week. And we've been looking at the comparisons here for quite a while, and we're going to give you the latest as of today. We've got a lineup for the Raw host show tonight. As far as ticket sales, we also have the early numbers for the first night of WrestleMania. Been a lot of discussion about how WrestleMania is going to do. And is it going to make a, a difference one night versus two nights? Can they can they pack 80,000 both nights? My prediction for a while now has been about 55,000 both nights. But we'll look at the early numbers and talk about that. We've also got the full results of SmackDown and Dynamite from Friday night. Updates on John Morrison. If you're in the Seattle area, New Japan Strong is coming to Seattle. Their first taping of 2022 will be taking place at Washington Hall, which is the home of Defy. So if you want to go to that show, I'll give you some of the information about that here today. And uh, all of the rest of the news. We should have a lot of opportunities here today to take your feedback as well. The text message line, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. We're going to get into all of the news here today. And yes, we'll talk about the whale costume. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Allow me to get a couple plugs out of the way first, and we'll get going in order of where they are on my timeline. At Twitter, at Brian Alvarez on at Twitter. However, this stupid thing works. Guy in charge of it stepped away today. It sucks so bad. Anyway, so at the top of my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, yes, last chance this year, it's our Cyber Monday sale. One month for $3.99. That's for WrestlingObserver.com. And you get everything. You get every new show that we do in podcast form. 13,000 shows. Literally, it's not a verbal typo. 13,000. Every show we have ever de done dating back to 2005, you get if you sign up today. New Observers. Back issue of The Observer. Uh, all of the observers dating back to like 1990, I think, was the first observer that went up there. And we may have some earlier ones as well. But thousands of observers, new observers every week, unlimited. If you signed up in 2005 and you've paid like, you know, $3,000 over the last 15 years, some bloke today can pay $3.99 and get everything you paid for. Not to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to tell you what you can get if you sign up today. So if you miss out on this, this is it. It's the last chance this year. So you would be... Literally a fool to not take advantage of the $3.99 deal. So head up there right now, WrestlingObserver.com, F4WOnline.com, or my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, and sign up today. Do not miss out. You will you will feel a fool. Second on my Twitter, uh, third of four co-host options for the Brian and Vinny show. This one ends in 17 minutes, and there's only one more after this. So if you've been bidding or if you thought, man, I'd love to do the brian and Vinny show with craig or granny and and review some horrible wrestling show well now's your chance go up there right now at brian alvarez third of fourth is up it ends at 3 30 eastern 12 30 pacific and then it's done and finally very quickly you blokes up here on the on the the twitch you asked so i'm gonna see if you're gonna put your money where your mouth is go to my twitter right now go fund me force brian to appear as oreo the orca on this show, I'll do the entire show wearing the Oreo, the Orca costume for no less than $1,000. And everyone goes, oh, well, if you do crowdfunding, I'll be happy to chip in. Well, I did crowdfunding. So we're going to see if you were telling the truth or if you were lying. So it's up right now at Brian Alvarez. Check it out and, and we'll see. We'll see what these Twitch homies are all about. All right. Let's get out of the important stuff right here. So, ticket sales. Tonight is Raw at the UBS Arena. 
And next week is Dynamite, also at the UBS Arena. Same building, same market, one week apart. A very, very obvious head-to-head battle right here. At this exact moment, as of today, according to WrestleTix, we have got 5,264 tickets out for Raw tonight. 5,200 fans. It is 73% full. 2,000 tickets outstanding have not been sold. 5,200 for tonight's Raw. Next week is Dynamite. They are currently at 8,500 tickets. Actually, 8,600 tickets. Uh, There are 3,000 tickets left because for whatever reason, Raw set up the building for 7,000 and AEW set up the building for almost 12,000. And not exactly sure. I know people go, oh, a big stage and everything like that. Bro, the stage ain't that big. But anyway, uh, right now, AEW is uh, almost, uh, let's see, tell me out here, 8,700 minus 52. 270, almost 3,000, 2,500, somewhere around there. So, yeah, it's a big difference. And uh, for those of you that have not been following the story of this, so uh, WWE put tickets on sale, and they were getting crushed by AEW. And so uh, this is also from WrestleTix. Beginning on December 12th, first they announced that Roman Reigns would now be on the show. And, of course, Roman Reigns is on SmackDown, but he'll be on Raw. Uh, Then they announced two-for-one for thanks for uh, Halloween. If you want to if you buy one ticket, you get a ticket free. Then on November 3rd, they announced a six man of Drew McIntyre, Xavier and Kofi versus Roman Reigns and the Usos, and they offered a new deal which which if you uh it's a four pack ticket deal in place. Me plus 3. If you buy any ticket above $15, you save money on every single other ticket. So for example, if a ticket's 30, you would now only pay 25. So that was the latest deal. Uh 1126, which should have been in 3 days ago, 2 for 1 Black Friday sale. And then uh later that day they announced also Edge is going to be on the show. So uh, the only thing that they couldn't have done is add Brock Lesnar or John Cena to the show. And uh, they're currently at 5,200 and nearly 3,000 tickets behind AEW in the same building. Hey, you know what? If you want to get mad, don't get mad at me. I'm just giving you the numbers, even though you will get mad at me. But that's beside the point. One other thing very quickly, WrestleMania Night 1, the estimates thus far. uh, Remember, I predicted 55,000 for both nights. And WrestleMania at this point, they have they have sold 44,000 tickets for night one. And uh, there are only uh, 4,700 tickets left and 3,400 combo tickets. So for whatever reason, they have set the building up for 52,000 fans for night one. Now, granted, they can continue opening up different seats and that sort of thing. But uh, right now, they have not even set it up for enough tickets to even meet what I thought they were going to do. And obviously, you know, 52,000 both nights is not a failure, okay? Because if they would have done a one-night WrestleMania, it would have done 80,000 paid, okay? If they sell 52,000 both nights, that's 104,000 paid. In the history of pro wrestling, no WWE show... No WrestleMania has ever legitimately sold 104,000 tickets. So, you know, some people are going to go, oh, what a failure. Bro, it's not a failure. They're going to sell 104,000 tickets for WrestleMania. And when all is said and done, they're probably going to sell 110,000 tickets for WrestleMania. Now, are they going to sell 80,000 paid both nights? No, they're not. And there are, I'm sure, many reasons for that. One of which is... You know, I I talked about how I don't want to go to WrestleMania because I don't want to deal with two nights of getting in and out of that building. And yes, I am one person, but uh, I got a lot of friends that we used to go to WrestleMania and they're doing the same thing I'm doing. They're not going. They're not going for two nights. So is it going to be, you know, whatever, like an utter failure? No. But is it going to do less than it would have done for one night in terms of one night in the building versus one night in the building? Yes, a lot less. But you're still going to get 50,000 people that are going to pay to go to both nights, and that's not a failure. So those are your WrestleMania numbers. Uh, that's the whole thing. You know, it's uh, 100,000 people, give or take, right? They go to WrestleMania every year. If half of you say, well, I'm not doing this crap anymore now that it's two nights, 
Okay. As long as those other half, the 50,000 people go, yeah, I'll absolutely do this for two nights, and you can adjust prices accordingly. And I think that's just the way of the world when it comes to WrestleMania and when it comes to, I think, some of their other bigger events, too. SummerSlam, I could see over two nights. I just, I, I can see this being the future as long as it works. If it doesn't work, then no, they're not going to do it. But I think as far as WrestleMania goes, I think this is probably a thing where you're going to see it now going forward. I, I can't I can't see there being a time where they're not going to want to do this if they can, just because you can try to maximize as much as you can. You, you baseline the thing at 50000 a night. You kind of plan it that way. And anything over that is, you know, you just adjust accordingly. Because what they would want one day is, of course, that 100,000-seat Cowboy Stadium or SoFi or wherever it is that they're at. You know, they do sell those things out for both nights. And you do have 200,000 people in there. Or God knows what they would announce in that that case 500,000 people somehow were at WrestleMania that year. I may have got a little cocky on this whale costume. Oh boy. Well, anyway, uh, someone here on the board <laughs> noted that uh, uh, is it over already? Is it a first no, round knockout? No, no, but it's it uh, it did uh, triple quickly. Uh, if we go above and beyond this, can it like can we add things to the outfit or something like that? And we'll talk some accoutrements. Uh, I should mention, by the way, somebody noted that night two typically does not do as well as night one. And it, we really don't know that. There's been one show that's been two nights with fans. So, you know, it'll depend. But, I mean, one key is we don't know who's going to be on what show. And so as a, as a ticket buyer, maybe that will uh, dissuade you from buying one or the other. Back in a moment, Observer Live. 770 right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is that, $230 left? Yeah. Well... It's it's trickling down. You're, well, you're resigning to your I hope it gets now. to like nine ninety nine, and no one has the one dollar. You know, the oh, other thing too I'll is, have that dollar. Don't worry. Oh, you know, it's funny there, Mister. Uh, it's speaking of being cocky. You should have learned a lesson when I explained never to be cocky. Why? People, are, people here are going, oh well, what happens if it goes well above one thousand? What's Brian going to do then? Yeah. Well, I don't think Brian's going to do nothing. I think Mike will have to be in a costume too. No. Well, dress him up like a furry. No. What, wait, a what? You coward. A furry? Coward. Taking this to a different direction. I'm not saying I'll... Never mind. Let's just move on to whatever we're really talking don't, about here. Don't make fun of, of uh, furries, Mike. I'm sure we have I'm many not... listening right now. All right, we've got uh, <laughs> Raw tonight. Two main event level matches and a return have been announced. Uh, by the way, there's four minutes left for the uh, Brian and Vinny auction. This is your last chance. Four minutes! Two main event level matches a return have been announced for Raw Monday. It was announced WWE champion Big E will face Kevin Owens in a non-title match. I don't think it said non-title match. I'll bet it said championship contender match. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor is also set for the show, as is the return of Edge. So, of course, the big question is, well, after all that, how much do they promise is actually going to be delivered tonight? Because historically... Something ain't going to happen. You know how many times they've announced one thing and then didn't do that one thing? Like, it is what? it is not uh, out of the question that that could happen here tonight, but that is raw this evening. Are you proud of yourself, by the way? For what? Because now I got people, like, typing in, like, Mike Sempervivi, and people are calling this now uh, Furry Four Weekly. Are you, are you, are you happy with yourself You know, I wasn't, right I wasn't happy. I was unaware of it, but now that you've mentioned it, I'm very pleased. Why is my name not in the scroll, by the way? If it's on the show, where's my Twitter feed? Why is that not Well, you sleep through the show this? so many times that it seems like a waste of time. Oh, you are so full of it, you. For the first time since being released by WWE, John Morrison posted a four-minute video to Instagram Sunday acknowledging his release, thanking his fans, indicating he isn't done with pro wrestling just yet. Well, that's good to hear. He confirmed he was released, saying he got a call from John Laurinaitis that his services were no longer required. He joked he didn't even get Laurinaitis' catchphrase of wishing him luck in his future endeavors. He said the whole idea of making yourself look bad to make someone else look good is a foreign concept to so many, but that is what meant him so much about his latest WWE run. He said he spoke to people he hadn't seen in 10 years, reconnected with old friends, made new ones while working with some of the best production people in the business. The whole thing was nostalgic, he said. 
It brought me back to how I felt when I was brand new to the business, he said, later admitting he was always so nervous about doing everything right, even getting to the arenas earlier than most. You know, my earliest memory of John Morrison, speaking of, of when he's talking about how he felt when he was brand new to the business, this was actually my first, the first time I ever saw him was when he was on Tough Enough. But uh, in, in it was like 2000 two-ish or whatever you guys know during the the uh twitch show during the commercial breaks if you are a subscriber if you're not getting the stupid commercials you get a a you get videos from uh back in the day my old wrestling matches and most of them are from portland wrestling miss rent to own and uh moondog ed moretti and etc etc so this was a show that was on the wb in portland it was the new portland wrestling and they they did the show every week. It was, it was a weekly show, and they did a couple of uh, of house shows as well. And I was doing a house show one day, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what the match was. But it was some sort of tag team match, and I just remember I took some move, and I sat up, and I looked out at the audience, and guess who was sitting there in the front row? John Morrison. <laughs> and I remember I was like, that's John Morrison. And he had this big smile on his face. He was enjoying the match. I will never forget that. <laughs> so he was just in a way he point, went. Was he in tough enough, I guess, at that point? Yeah, I guess he would have been in tough enough. I'll be damned. Yeah. I mean, it's such a uh boy. Uh, you know, I guess some people thought the uh the Maven season was their the pinnacle and the oh, peak. God. And I guess for, for some people it was, but really I you know, the most memorable one that i can remember was uh it was him and it was uh oh god the young kid who had brain cancer um matt oh what was his name capitelli Shoot. yes capitelli yeah so i mean that because the whole thing with hardcore holly and you know that may have been the last time a lot of people considered al snow human was on that show but yeah i mean that was it's amazing how long he has hung around and been around at wwe and <laughs> How they have not really maximized him at all. Now, have they, especially this last time around where, again, what a bridge John Morrison could have been for all of those young kids coming up. I mean, there's no situation that he hasn't gone through in wrestling and in, in show business because of his acting deals, because of the stuff he did with Lucha Underground, unique contracts, unique situations, dealing with agents. There's so much that this guy could pass on that no matter who picks him up, if he's willing to come on somewhere in a full-time or a semi-full-time capacity boy he could be really really valuable really could be and plus he's got a lot still to give in the ring as far as a performer goes too well looks like we made it <laughs> i honestly did not think we were going to make it in 30 minutes uh, eleven hundred dollars well ff beer money here uh apparently you donated a lot of it uh, John here, three hundred dollars. Thomas, two thirty. Wow. Actually, Thomas did two thirty and one hundred. So he was Tom, he was determined. Thomas Lawler. Are we uh, gonna find Thomas this out Lawler. later on when you do the show with him. A lot of fifties and and thirty fives and twenty fives and I guess it's gonna be done. You know why? Because I'm a man of my word. And I'm yeah. I'm uh, I'm I've got mixed feelings right here because there's there's. Uh, there's there's half of me that's really happy that we we raised that money for Whale Scout. There's also part of me that is uh you know what I'm I'm dreading it but but here's here's my thought. I think we need to do it. I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow, but I think it needs to be done on a uh on a day that like we review raw or NXT 2.0. Maybe I'll let the uh the viewers decide. Uh, what day they think would be best. Well, why not AEW? I mean, if they can wrestle in Ghostbuster costumes, uh, you might as well be able to do a show in a whale costume. Yeah, I think if I'm going to do it, I need to go all out. So it should be on a, on a day where I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to get really upset about something. So would you now, if, if asked, would you show up on the, what's her name? Lash LaRue show or whatever the hell it's called. Lash Lashes Legends Lashes. show. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you, you can raise enough the... money for that. Would you show up in the whale costume? You wouldn't do uh, I it? I mean, I, I would, but it's not going to happen. It's it's literally not going to happen. So don't even get your uh, don't get your hopes up, everybody. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, for the donations, and we'll figure out a day. I'm going to have to get that thing uh, 
Got to figure right. out. You you're not you're not Brian Alvarez that day. You're Oreo. Yeah, I will be Oreo that day. Oh, but you know what day I will be Brian Alvarez on uh, January 15, 2022. When I go to New Japan Strong in Seattle at Washington Hall, big announcement today. We will have Jay White, Filthy Tom, Jonah, Phantasmo, Fred Rosser, Gabriel Kidd. Tickets go on sale today at uh, 10 a.m., so they're already on sale. Prices range from 30 for standing room to 150 for the VIP stage seating, which, by the way, if you've never been to Washington Hall, if you got the money... And clearly these Twitch homies got the money, then you should be sitting on that stage. It's awesome. Seattle in January follows L.A., California in December, Riverside and San Jose in November, Philadelphia in October. I just watched uh, the New Japan Strong Show from the ECW Arena where uh, I watched a New Japan show in Philadelphia that featured ECW chants. That was something else. <laughs> so get your tickets now, everybody. And can you imagine how many young guys out of the dojo are going to be there? You know, they haven't even announced any of those guys. Can you imagine who is still left to show up? Just look at that on paper, how strong these, you know, no pun intended, New Japan Strong shows are. It's just, it's great. And, you know, I know Game Changers started up their LA Fights thing, Defy. Again, it's just for some indies right now, it's not for everybody, but for some indies right now, Boy, are things really strong, and are they great? And I'm obviously we're going to probably get to some of the news coming out of Japan with some of the restrictions that are taking place and how that may affect things. But one thing that is for sure in all of the the if there's a silver lining that has happened in the pandemic is been the immersion. It's just the amazing, you know display that New Japan Strong has put out with their shows, with the quality of the TV, with the live events. It's just been great. I didn't hear a word you said. I was just trying to figure out how many even make this work. You know how big the head is? <laughs> like, it's gigantic. I think I'm going to have to put the microphone inside the head. I think it's the only way I'm going to make it work. But yes, uh, New Japan. Uh, yeah, there's there's going to be a... I don't know how that's going to affect... We'll talk about that when we come back from the break. But yes, uh, Japan is, is instituting a new travel ban because of this... Uh, uh, Omnicrom. I was. I always screw up the name. It sounds like a transformer, but this new variant has got the uh, the borders in Japan closing. So I don't know how it's going to affect uh, the the three days of of Wrestle Kingdom. Well, I think we know how it's going to affect it. There's going to be no foreigners there, and they may well, have to switch up the this biggest issue. Will Osprey match. The biggest issue is the Osprey match. Like, well, yeah, you know, well, the foreigners are already not going over there. I mean, you know, Juice and and uh, yeah. And, you know, Okada and those guys, which actually it's going to be interesting to see uh, with the travel ban. Like, are people going to have to go back early? Are, are people that have bookings here in the U.S. going to have to rush back? Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Subravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I'm getting a rampage and smackdown here. But first off, I want to mention if you're a freeloader listening today, why be a freeloader anymore? $3.99 Cyber Monday deal. Full access to everything at WrestlingObserver.com. Unlimited full access. New shows. I got three shows I'm doing today. I got this one. I got the Filthy Tom Lawler show at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. I got Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave. Three shows in one day. Multiply that by the last 15 years, and you can see how there's 13,000 shows in the archives. All the Christmas shows. And everything like that. Jim Valley is now trying to get a fundraiser for me to wear it at, at the next <laughs> Defy show. Please. <laughs> anyway, uh, three ninety nine. Everything. Observers. Back issues of the Observers. Uh, the world famous uh, Figure Four Weekly archives are up there. New shows, old shows, podcasts of shows. It's a steal, everybody. I, I shouldn't need to tell you that. Three dollars and ninety nine cents. Go up today and check it out. And let's talk about Rampage. Adam Cole and Bobby Fish beat Orange Cassidy and Wheeler Yuta. This is a, we don't have the, you know, these blokes get mad at me because I haven't put the ratings out yet. Because they're not out yet. But they get mad anyway. Oh, well, the overnights, oh, yeah. The show's going to do bad. Like, I don't know what the number is, but it's going to do bad. And Dynamite did bad. 
And SmackDown is going to do comparatively bad compared to what SmackDown does because it was Thanksgiving. It happens every year. It's not new unless you're new. But the point is, I would like to, on a normal day, see the quarter hours for an Orange Cassidy match because Orange Cassidy and Adam Cole did what everybody says you can't do on national television, which was house show spots. And it would be interesting to see if, in fact, what everybody believes, you can't do that stuff on national television. Can you? I don't know. But this is a bad week to try to figure it out. But they had a very, very fun match. Uh, turned serious there at the end. Wheeler, you'd have made a great hot tag. And then Bobby Fish killed this poor bloke with a top rope falcon arrow and pinned him. It's a good opener. Rio it was, and that's the best way you could have said it. I was actually thinking about how to describe this match and you said it it was like a house show match and it was it's not going to be for everybody i know some people already pushed back on it it went too long too much haha all this sort of stuff but the bottom line is until otherwise proven orange cassidy has been a ratings draw so it'll be interesting to see how this does although again rampage friday night thanksgiving all that sort of stuff all is going to play a part we had Riho and Britt Baker. The story was if Riho beat her, because Riho was uh, never eliminated from the uh, Casino Battle Royal at the at the uh, uh, All Out pay per view, she would get a shot at Britt Baker's title. And uh, I was just flabbergasted last night as as Vinny's talking about how he thought that Riho had no hope. <laughs> and granted, Britt never loses, but we need a challenger here, right? Who's our next challenger? So Riho beat her with a cradle, and they had a good match. A lot of it was during the commercial break, but in total, they got 12 minutes to do this match. It wasn't just quick match, distraction, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they did a real match, and good near falls there at the end, and Britt got pinned with a cradle, so it will be Britt Baker versus Riho for the title coming up here very soon. Yeah, and I think her next big challenger is Thunder Rosa. So you still have to have some title matches in that time, and you have to have something else going on. And I think you still have, you know, another aspect of this is going to be the Jamie Hayter part of it, too, and where they decide to go with that and how fast they decide to go with that with her and Baker. But, you know, Riho right now I think is a is a fine choice, and it's making hay out of what I guess was a legitimate mistake with her going through the second rope and then being technically eliminated, even though I guess she was technically never eliminated now from that battle royal. This coming Wednesday on Dynamite, we got Cody and Andrade, Atlanta Street Fight. We've got Ruby versus Chris Statlander in a quarterfinal for the TBS title. And by the way, everybody on uh, Twitch right now, who's going to win this tournament? I'm leaning towards Jade Cargill. Same here. What about the rest of you? Who's yeah. going to win? Apparently, I'm a winner right now because my name got added to the scroll, so I appreciate that, Producer oh, Jared. I man. really do. Thank you, brother. A gimmick, Jared. Good looking out. Uh, Brian Danielson will face Alan Angels to kill another man in his hometown. And uh, like I said last night, it's too bad that they can't finally do this Brian Danielson versus Adam Page match in uh, in Aberdeen. Aberdeen? Why? Because Brian, are you dense? No, because Brian because Danielson's killing hometown. everybody in their know, hometown, that's... so he should be finally defeated in his own hometown. See, of I was thinking the opposite way because of my East Coast bias and the fact that I would love to go to this show as you do that show in like Richmond, Virginia, and in Hangman's hometown, and you got all this cockiness going on with Brian Danielson can beat anybody. He's gonna beat. He's gonna beat Adam Page right in his hometown and show his dominance, and then. Boom, he loses. Well, yeah. yeah, you're right. So I like it your way, it's too. It's either Aberdeen or it's or it's Hangman's hometown. It's <laughs> one or the other. And since there's right no in... buildings whatsoever in Aberdeen, unless you want to run in the sawmill, then it's going to have to be in the Hangman's hometown. Well, Which also may not it. have any buildings. Uh, now say, Aaron's Creek, Virginia is right on, like the, I think, the Carolina-Virginia line way south. There ain't nothing down there. You have to do it in Norfolk or Roanoke, which, hey, look, old Crockett times, you know, you want to put a little spin on things. Roanoke was a great city for them. They were just in Norfolk. You saw heard how good they were. Do it in Richmond. You got, you got options in Virginia. Bro, it's also cold. Well, but what you true. could do is you could, find, you could find a farm – in uh, in Hangman Page's shoot hometown, yeah. and and you, you do an outdoor show. You put the ring in the middle of the the field, and you sell tickets, and uh, you do an outdoor show. I want right? Jeremy Borash. How's that any different that. from uh, from Club Lavella? 
That's true. It's not, well, except it's totally different. Except sort of. To call it on the foot. Look, we've had a motorcycle rally. When's the last time we've had a wrestling show on a farm that wasn't, okay, that was not a death match show or something like that? I mean, has there ever been a festival on the farm or something like that? Or, you know, has there ever been something? Give me something, people. See, Anywhere? this person here goes, well, Bash at the Beach had a $0 a gate. That's right. It was at the beach. Yeah. But I don't know if you guys are, uh, you know, some of you may be, you know, city slickers. But for us, uh, for us country boys, you ever gone to the fair? The... Yeah, you know what? You have to pay admission to get into the fair. It's not free. Oh. Well, so, Dave so Chappelle you, did if those... you would like to, you could charge admission to the yeah. uh, the fight on the farm. Yes, Dave Chappelle was doing all those Netflix shows from his neighbor's farm, wasn't he? And people were like, you know, paying big money to get up on there. So yeah, you could do the same exact thing here. Make it a special event. Make it a very a unique and a very closed event. A big spectacle here to, to lead into this match. All righty. Then the main event was Eddie on Kingston. Monday. Oh, and by the way, also on Wednesday, uh, Billy and Colton against Sting and Darby Allen is going to be the match. So are they going to end Colton's win streak in a random tag match? It should be a singles loss, I would think. So maybe they're actually going to win. But that means that one of them would have to pin Sting or Darby Allen, which seems like a poor idea. So I'll be interesting to see what they do there. Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia was the main event. They got 15 awesome minutes of violence. And uh, what can I say about it? It's Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia. Eddie Kingston does the fighting gimmick as good as anybody. Daniel Garcia does the shooter gimmick. It was a, it was a grappler versus a striker. And uh, at the end of the day, the striker won with the back fist to the future. And uh, I loved every moment of it. So, good show. Wrestling-wise, good show. Did you need to watch it on Friday night? No. But if you if you recorded it, should you watch it? Yes. That is the ultimate plus three show, isn't it? You know, it's on for late Friday, and if you're like a, a football fan, or if you're a Monday through Friday nine to five, or like you go out on Friday night and you got things to do on Saturday, if you got kids, they have things that you got to go take them to and things like that. If you like college football, yeah, then you got pro football on Sunday. Like Rampage seems to be that show that needs to understand because of where it's at. As long as they're doing the numbers that TNT wants, and you can't make it a throwaway show, but it is what it is and you just have to make it where you want people to tune in within the next three days you want them to watch it on dvr whereas smackdown and i don't know exactly what their numbers are on dvr purely on dvr boy there are times where you hear about smackdown like this being a good example with tony storm getting hit in the face with a pie and you know, all that sort of stuff, and it basically being a placeholder for Roman Reigns, even though we got the reveal that, that Brock's coming back at the end. I mean, it was a placeholder for their whole feud going on right now. Do you want to watch that show? I mean, after watching it, I, I didn't want to watch that show, and I think a lot of people hear about it, and I wonder how many people just delete it right off their DVR without watching it. Well, no one should. If you're going to DVR it, watch it. Otherwise, yeah, why so, bother? Eh, I mean, look, if you're an average wrestling fan and you put on, you know, you just hit it record and it's going to record, you know, the entire series. Yeah. But if, you know, again, if look how many people listen to this show and uh, the rest of the shows on the website where you know, they don't watch at all or they'll like dip in and out of things. And if they hear something is good, they'll go back and watch it. So, you know, again, and that's I don't know how much credit you get for something like that, too, if you only go back and watch a certain segment of a show on DVR. But Again, that's that's all above me. That's what Brandon Thurston and people like that are for. Let's do some of the text messages here. If you want the SmackDown report, uh, myself and Filthy Tom, coming up in an hour. If you're a subscriber to video.f4wonline.com, you can watch it live, or you can watch it plus three. And uh, same if you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, which you everyone listening to this should be, because it's three dollars and ninety nine cents today. Rhea Ripley did an interview before Survivor Series where she was asked about the difference between NXT and now the main roster this year, and she laughed about saying she's far more stressed all the time now, and she went from feeling like a somebody in NXT to a nobody who nobody has an opinion on yet. That was a poorly written final line there, but you get the gist of it here. You know, I... Yeah. Uh, 
feel like a nobody right now, no, Brian? No, I was No, not. you're some. Not only are you somebody, Brian, you're two things, man. You're animal. You, as a, you're a human being, and you're a mammal named Oreo. That's what you are, Brian. You're those two things. Yeah, you're a together. human and a mammal, too, you dork. Whatever. I don't know. Go on. Now, I was buying now, you some time. You, you ready? Uh, no, I was just thinking. Can I think without having to have someone talk? What do you think this is? Impact? No, radio. Matt Stryker? So Jesus. listen. Check Wikipedia. Every now and then I, I review this NXT 2.0 show and I, I just eviscerate it. And uh, you know that, that guy that he says stand up for WWE and he's got his fist in the air, he's crying? He tweets me. A bunch of them, actually. And, and they're so mad. And they're so defensive of, of NXT. And I, I just think, <laughs> uh, do you guys send these same messages to, like, Scotty Too Hottie? <laughs> who quit because like it switched to nxt 2.0 and the guy said i promised myself i'd never do a job just for the paycheck that's what i'm doing now so i'm out of here i mean so i don't understand about these these uh stand up for wwe blokes you guys actually think that i when i bury all of this stupid stuff in nxt and raw and smackdown and baby faces getting buried and and, you know, blokes getting humiliated. and this You actually think that the talent's sitting there going, oh, man, that was awesome. That was so, it was so great how, like, you know, I used to be wrestling Johnny Gargano in 25-minute, in four-and-a-half-star matches, and now I'm, you know, wrestling a guy that's been in the business for, like, three weeks and he sucks. Like, you think that they actually sit there and they think that? You think I'm in the minority? You don't think I talk to anybody and find out what people think about Raw and SmackDown and, and NXT and... You think I'm just making this stuff up? Well, think again. He ain't. Are you going to send some mean message to Rhea Ripley about how dare she say something negative about the main roster? She's supposed to love it. I'm sure she's happy there and everything like that, but it's totally different. NXT is totally different than some the way you it used to be. Stop being dorks. Back All right? In, back in a moment, everybody. The creation of me having to wear, wear a whale costume is not enough for some of these people. Hmm. Now they're rubbing it in on Twitter. <laughs> They've got appropriate responses from me. Go ahead, Vin, or whatever your name is. Sam, did you want to say something about somebody? Osprey? Well, I'll just I'm say that the, the easy answer for the second night of the Tokyo Dome, if he is available and ready to go, would be, of course, Kota Obushi to face either Okada or Shingo, and I think it's going to be Okada. Now, if that's not possible in the kingdom of Mike Sabervivi, what would happen? I would say that that match turns into Okada against Katsuhiko Nakajima. That's what I would do. Will that happen? I no. don't know. Probably not. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think that's going to happen, dude. <laughs> I don't think so either. But you know what? In my kingdom, that's what would happen if... Kota Ibushi is not available, but they were saying it was going to be around two months. That's probably who it's going to be. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap it up for today. Hey, don't forget the uh, the annual uh, Cyber Monday special. The one time per year that we do a $3.99 special on Cyber Monday. It's up right now. $3.99, unlimited access to WrestlingObserver.com. And for our friends at Video.F4WOnline.com, myself and Filthy Tom, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, We'll be talking SmackDown and New Japan Strong and more. Thanks to all of the uh, the Twitch homies, the the nice ones that donated but didn't rub it in. <laughs> you know what I think about the rest of you. And we're out of time, everybody. Every day, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Sundays with Andrew Zarian, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Here on Sports Byline USA. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Let's sing Observer Live. <laughs>